What's up, everybody? Welcome. I'm greeted here with George, and my name is Paul. And we want to make a series of cool videos for you that will teach you how to create products and websites because we feel it's very important to know what you want to build, not just how you want to build it and how do you go about thinking about it. And these are going to be tutorials that we're going to share on Project Hive YouTube channel, so you'll be able to check it out. George, you want to do a quick intro? Just as a short introduction, I just, I think now I could definitely say it's about 27 years since I've started working in IT, but I've done all sorts of stuff from web design to user experience, user experience architecture later on, and then front-end development, and then I ended up in doing full-stack development. During all these years, if one thing was uh, abundantly clear, it is okay for you to code. It's granted very valuable for our corporations, but looking at the at the way that the information has progressed in the past couple of years and technologies is clearly that more and more people are getting replaced by the machines. Machines are very performant. They execute perfectly, but they don't need to think too much and they cost less than you'd uh, have like sometimes even 10 people hired. That's the latest generation of AI. However, what the AI is not really good at, <laughs> someone said, if you want to build a product, AI can build almost anything for you as long as you are able to explain it to him. So that's the general thing. Basically, if you don't know how to build a product, the AI basically will do nothing for you. So the most important things for me and Paul here, we would like to, to show you in the uh, upcoming series is for you to build products. That's the foremost important aspect of the maybe, you know, near future and by near future meaning in the next couple of years, everything will transition to that. At least this is my own personal opinion and the way I see things progressing. Product development have been done by people since the beginning of any kind of product development. You can imagine Adobe Da Vinci did product development, Calandra did product development. But before we go into that, to shorten things about my experience, yes, that's what I did. I've done a lot of product development over the years. I worked for large corporations as well, uh, including some of the uh, largest banks in the world, Deutsche Bank, you know, Investment, Raiffeisen Group and support. I even worked for a uh, European Commission and a couple of the institutes. And uh, for some strange reasons, I ended up working for Strapi for a very short amount of time, which was an interesting experience as well. But yeah, that's about it in a nutshell. Yeah, I think for me, like kind of seeing, you know, folks trying to get into development, but then seeing everything that's happening in the world with the layoffs or is AI going to take everybody over? I still think learning to code is a valuable skill because I feel it's the language of the machine and the better you understand it, the better you're able to get better at prompting or just moving faster. So I still think it's an important skill to learn. But even what's more important is to understand how to take the skills that you have and create useful products that solves business problems. So I am actually in Thailand right now and I went to a meetup, which was basically business people. It's not developers and they think a little bit different. They don't really care who or how you code something. They just want to make sure, can you create a solution for their business? And I was kind of like amazed how a bunch of people that I met, they suck at coding, but they're able to use like low code solution to kind of stitch few different services together that solve a problem in a very specific domain. And all of a sudden they have a business. Like for instance, I talked to someone, their whole business is basically, let's say you're moving and you have a bunch of furniture that you got to get rid of. So they created an app which uses AI to basically, you take pictures of the furniture that you have and it will automatically find people that want your stuff and they'll set up the pickup dates and everything automated. I was like, wow, that's like a, such an interesting idea. And so like, for me, I realized that in the, this world that could be uncertain, am I going to find a job or could I develop a skill that I could maybe create my own service? And this is why I wanted to come with George and basically practice that most important part. It's like, how do you develop products that might have you know, a need for somebody? And if you could do that and come up with good ideas, you could actually build it with minimum amount of development because of these AI tools that exist. And I'm sure people go to argue with us, George, and say like, no, you need to know everything. <laughs> but I think with the evolution of the AI tools, it's like learn how to build products that solve problems and then learn how to use these AI tools with your understanding of programming. I'm not saying don't learn programming. I study programming all the time, but I think change your shift in thinking. That's, that's the definite uh, detail there. Uh, programming versus coding, because I think a lot of people start to mix these two together and they're two different, uh, you know, concepts and they do two different things. So coding is clearly the last layer, uh, is basically the translation of your thoughts into instructions for a machine. 
that's what it does. If you have the color on the screen, you would have to apply uh, this coding within a programming language or a design language. As funny as it is, a lot of people don't understand that HTML and CSS are markup and design languages, not programming languages. That's the difference in code. And then you have programming, which is the other methodology which translates your ideas into actionable verbs. And you can put all these verbs together to construct a product. So basically, you want an elevator to go from the ground floor to the up floor. Then you instruct the machine and say, hey, when I press this button, you close the doors, you then start the engine, the electrical engine, and you move it about 10 meters up or whatever is the scale of the floor, the next floor. You reach that level, you stop, you open the doors, and you know, let people out. That's what programming is. So you notice that we haven't talked about coding whatsoever. Then if we go into coding, depending on what the elevator had, and maybe it might be a very low level, like maybe C++ or sometimes maybe Android nowadays, you never know what the Java is what I meant. So it's very tiny code within, within that specific part, which executes those things with functions and whatever variables, etc. So that is the difference that a lot of people don't, don't get about programming and, and coding. So then if you go to look into AI, per se, you don't code any longer, you do programming. So programming, you'll do it forever. It doesn't matter what it is. Heck, when you have a smart fridge, you do programming. When you have a TV set, you do programming, you do no coding. You know, you have a toaster, you do programming, you turn the knob, you press the button, you program it. That's the difference. And that's how you should think about, you know, product design in generally. And how do you build things? Yeah. And so the goal for us is to teach you how to come up with ideas that solve problems and how to be able to organize them that you could explain them to either another programmer that could build it for you or an AI tool that you use. And one of the things that I've seen a lot of people do, like there are people that are better programmers than I am, and they still have yet to build a product that actually makes the money, right? And so like the programming skill is not the most important part. It's actually understanding a problem that you're trying to solve for a business and creating that solution. And then the programming is just that part that kind of like brings it into reality, but that could be done by a programmer that you hire. It could be done by you as a programmer, or it could be done by AI tools. So that's one thing that I learned from a lot of these founders. When they get a good idea, they almost don't care what the technical like implementation is because they know once they have the thing that solves the problem for a business, they're either going to hire someone to build it for them or they're going to use AI tools to build them. So like the actual problem solution is the most important part and not the tech that you use to kind of build it. And so for us, with George, what we want to practice is get better of coming up with these good building ideas and how to think about solving business issues to help you guys and us. Because selfishly, I want to build my own product as well. And so I want to learn as much as I can from George as well. So we could all have the power to build cool things. So with that being said, we're going to start simple. So with George today, we wanted to kind of work on a coffee shop idea and how we would think about it. And as this video series evolves, we're going to make more complex and more complex products, but we want to start pretty simple.